It's a bit slower, sure, but I didn't expect this. A 75% drop in power consumption? Now that's a game changer. Now are you curious? Well, let's dive straight into the results and stick around to later where I show you how to achieve this yourself along with the methodology behind it. Now here's a chart of power versus FPS when playing games. And you'll notice that the power does increase and towards the top end, you'll find that you still get that more performance, but it comes with diminishing returns. Now, does this still hold true for rendering? I thought it would until I run these tests. By the way, hi, I'm Mike. I'm a 3D generalist and I've been teaching Blender since 2014, a lifelong game, and I'm always looking to squeeze the most out of my PC. Like most, I assume faster always means more power, and that's often true for gaming, but rendering? Let's find out. Now I tested this on my 3090, my 3070 and a 2070 laptop. And finally I got my hands on a 2060 desktop as well. The results, well, sometimes the gains are minimal. Other times they're absolutely massive. If you give this a go, share your GPU results in the comments for others as well, especially for the newer cards that I don't have my hands on yet. Now, while I've done my best to be scientific, these are my results. So expect some variation if you've got similar hardware, but you should see similar trends. Now, a quick jump in here. Some of you will want to know what operating system, all the other settings. Now, I ran the majority of these tests using Windows 11, uh, 23H2. I did most of this testing back late October, early November. So I was running NVIDIA drivers 565.90 and I was using primarily MSI Afterburner 4.6.5, uh, Blender Benchmark 3.1.0 and Firmark 2.3. Now I did a minimum of three runs and I averaged the results and my screen captures that I took during this process were not included in that data. So let's start with my 3090. You can see here from around 150 watts, there is a huge increase in performance all the way up to around 225 where it starts tapering off. But above 200 watts, those returns rapidly diminish. For example, going from 225 watts to 325, it only gets me 9% more Blender performance in terms of rendering, but I'm expending 62% more power. That's a huge increase in the amount of power used. Now, if you want to see more content like this, let me know in the comments below. And if you're enjoying this content, please do hit like and a sub to the channel would make my day. Now, moving on to the 3070, it's roughly half the speed typically of my 3090. Now, starting at around 100 watts, the gains are minimal all the way up to 180 watts where the card maxes out. Now here, 80% more power is only giving us 11 to 12% more performance. That's a huge saving again. Now, deciding how much power you actually use really depends on your needs. Now, if you were doing an animation, it was going to take 11 hours. Saving an extra hour might justify the extra expenditure in electricity, for instance. But for everyday work, though, I'll admit, I think I'm going to limit my 3090 to around 225 watts. And the 3070, I'm going to cut it all the way down to 100 watts. So what about those 20 series cards? Well, the 2060 just had a flat performance curve. It maxed out around 125 watts with absolutely no room to tweak. Now the 2070 laptop, and you may come across this yourself, it depends on the laptop, its manufacturer, how unlocked it is, but mine was BIOS locked. So I couldn't change anything at all. However, I could play with the voltage curves. Now I dropped the power from 115 watts to 80 watts. Now that's a 46% cut around there for about a 7% speed loss. So that is actually quite an awesome improvement, but tweaking voltage can lead to instability. So if you want to go through this, proceed with caution. And this is primarily where I used MSI Afterburner. So how do you limit your power? You've seen the results, but it does depend on your GPU. Now I'm going to focus on Nvidia cards here. However, if you're doing AMD or Intel, I presume you can do the same thing in their power management tools. Now I'm going to use Nvidia's app. It came out and it actually meant that I could go ahead and use it's far more straightforward than uh, using MSI Afterburner or any other BIOS tweaks. So we're going to install the app 
and then go to the system tab on the left hand side. We're going to switch to the performance tab and look for the sliders. Now, not all of the sliders are going to be adjustable. Laptops will often lock these and you may have a card that doesn't have access to all of it. Now, focus on the maximum power slider, adjust it and you're basically done. Now, how do you find the ideal setting? Well, there's no one size fits all, but here's my approach. First of all, you need something to compare to. So download the Blender benchmark. Once you've got that, max out all of the sliders, run the benchmark and note the score. This is going to give you all your maximum possible performance. Now, reduce the power slider. Don't touch any of the others. Just reduce the power slider in 10% increments and record the scores either for the test as a whole or for the individual ones. Now, the reason why you might want to do the individual ones is it may reveal that certain scenes require a bit more power than others, for example. Now, at some point, like I discovered around the 200 watt mark, performance will sharply drop. And when it does, you can start going either side of that and fine tuning 5% or even 1% steps. Now, bear in mind, when you go down to those 1% steps, variations between runs will have a more significant impact than anything else. And especially if you've been running for a while, there's heat buildup, there's background processes and Windows quirks all play a role. Now, higher end cards seem to see the biggest differences here. But is upgrading to a newer, more power efficient GPU a better move? Well, check out this video next to explore more.